Hello, my name is Donna Lee. I'm with Vaughn Public Libraries. I'm very pleased to welcome you on to Vaughn Public Libraries to be part of our living library. So you're Deborah Kerbel, you're an author, and I know that you've written quite a few books. You've written picture books um, for younger children, so quite a few picture books, um, quite a few. And I know you've also written chapter books for middle grade readers, um, chapter books for young adult readers. Um, this book's actually a graphic novel, um, sort of a non-fiction graphic novel, so quite a large body of work. Um, so we're very pleased to welcome you here for our Living Library to tell us about um, your story and, and your experiences. So thank you so much for coming. And I know that this is a very standard question for an author, um, but just to go back to the beginning, how old were you when you knew that you wanted to be a writer? Well, um, it's, it is a standard question, but I don't have a standard answer. <laughs> um, it kind of happened bit by bit. My, my father um, is also a writer. Uh, he wrote fiction, uh, I think four novels um, when I was a kid, and then he went on to become a financial writer. And so when I was uh, in grade six, my, my classmates voted me most likely to become the next Margaret Lawrence. By, by the fact that my father was a writer. So I thought, no, but I, you know, I didn't want to write what he wrote and I really didn't think of myself in that way. Um, and so then when I went to university and I, um, I studied English literature and I read Frankenstein, the novel by Mary Shelley. And I think that that was the first time that I really thought I could be a writer. She was 19 years old when she wrote that book. I was 19 when I read it. And I just felt like, um, you know, through through the the universe, a little tap on my shoulder, like you could do this too. This is something to think about. Um, I was 19 then. I didn't start writing my first book until my I would say my mid 20s. So it did take a long time of kind of mulling over. I could do it. I could do it maybe. Um, but I didn't start writing till my mid 20s. And I I think. I tell people uh, often, um, you know, you have to be a reader first. You have to be a copious, like, hungry, hungry reader first before you can, before you're teeming with words and they start to spill out of you. So it did take up until I was, I guess, in my mid-20s for that to really feel like I was ready to start putting my own words down on the page. Now, there's a lot of perceptions about writers, and I think one of the perceptions about writers is that they're very sort of solitary, lonely creatures, and there's this sort of perception that they sit alone all day, um, maybe not in an attic anymore, but somewhere um, <laughs> alone, and that it's a very solitary profession. Do you find it? Do you find it kind of a, a lonely, solitary thing, or, or, or how do you find it as a, as a career? I do find it solitary, um, but I, I also think that most, um, I, I can't speak for every creative person out there, but I would say probably the majority of writers, creative people, that's why they seek this out. There's something about our personalities that we want to kind of retreat. We want time and, and solitude and peace and quiet to be able to hear our thoughts. Um, I definitely am an introvert which means being alone recharges my batteries. I love going out, being with my friends. I love, um, every now and then there's writing gatherings, I meet with my friends, there's conferences and festivals, and those are great, but I find them exhausting. And my happy place is a room by myself. <laughs> um, I really just, you know, I crave that. And it's interesting, because I actually married an extrovert, and um, he, you know, the, being a, alone saps him of energy like crazy, whereas for me, I find it invigorating. And um, part of the problem actually is during the pandemic, um, my house suddenly became very full. Normally, I was used to my kids being at school, my husband being at the office, and I had time and, and um, opportunity and, and, and solitude to write. And that was, for me, one of the most challenging parts of the pandemic. I lost my solitude there was always people around and interruptions. Um, I've heard it said, and I, I love this analogy, 
that um, to be writing, it's almost like um, you have to enter a trance, like you're at the bottom of an ocean and, and you're walking along the ocean floor in slow motion and you're discovering the world around you and then one interruption, up you go back up to the surface. And that's so true because then it can take a long time to descend back again to where you need to be for the, the story and the words and, and the ideas to come back to you. So that's a very long answer to your question, but yes, solitude, definitely. And um, that's probably why I ch one of the reasons why I chose this career too. But uh, I like that analogy of um, being at the bottom of the ocean and, mm. and finding that because you're in a different world, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And it must have been challenging during um, mm -hmm. during the pandemic, along with mm -hmm. many other challenges, of yeah. course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, that's great that you have that, that you know that that what works for you. I do. I do. And I tell my family now, like, please, like, just don't just don't knock on the door if you want to know if I want a cup of coffee. Because, <laughs> you know, that can just shatter the, you know, sort of the yeah. spell. It is like being in a trance in some, in some ways. So I will say I have been a lot less productive um, since the pandemic happened, um, just because I don't have, I, I, I don't have a room, of, a room of my own. As Virginia Woolf once said, every writer needs that, needs that space. Well, that actually does kind of lead to my next question. Um, again, and this is sort of a, a typical question for an author, but where you get your inspiration from. Mm -hmm. And they always give the advice to, to children who want to write, to write what you know. Yes. So that means if you're writing what you know, then you're getting inspiration from within right. and from your own life. Mm -hmm. Is that where you get your inspiration? Or do you find inspiration by looking externally and doing research and finding out about other people? So basically where, where are you getting your inspiration? Is it internal, is it from within? Or are you looking for that external stimulation? It's, it's a little bit of both. I mean, I will say I, I certainly, um, I, I walk around with my radar up. I'm always looking for ideas. Um, and I know it's an idea, you know, you know there's a lot of ideas out there. <laughs> there's a lot of um, potential inspiration, but I know I've hit something when um, when it strikes a chord in me and I want to know more and you know my curiosity just pings and I I think well, if I find this fascinating um, then then I can I can put I can make that translate into a book and my readers will hopefully find that fascinating so I definitely get inspiration from everywhere um, I have can I grab this book here Absolutely. Sun Dog um, I tell kids that the inspiration for this book came, I was walking my dog on a very cold morning and I saw some beams of light through the, um, through the houses and it was an actual sun dog, which you can see in the opening. Um, so this is the character, but a sun dog, here we go. The very first end papers. Oh, the end papers. papers. This is a sun dog. Do you know what that is? No. It's, it's just a refraction of light around the sun and it happens when the sun is low to the horizon and you see that's a halo of light. So I actually saw one of these on my street early in the morning and I, I went home and I thought, sun dog, sun dog, it's a great title. Um, what can I do with that? So this is one example of where I got um, an idea just from, you know, from my, from my world. But it just intrigued me so much that I wanted to write more. This book here, which is coming out in um, September, this one was completely inspired by social media, uh -huh. <laughs> which is interesting because, you know, don't be on social media, you should be writing, but sometimes that's where inspiration comes from too. So I think you just have to be really open. Open, always curious, and, all, and look for the thing that really um, incites passion and, and excitement and curiosity in, in you. That's what I do. Well, that's, so I, I like that, that you're always sort of um, always looking. Always looking, yes. Uh, what would you say has been the biggest challenge for you as a writer? Um, I think the biggest challenge was, has been and continues to be um, cultivating a patience chip. <laughs> um, I'm a very I'm an excited person. I'm eager. I don't have a lot of 
patients just innately and um, publishing is, as they say, it moves at a glacial pace. So um, just becoming okay with that. Um, it took years and years for my first book to get published. Um, and then after that, you know, you think, oh, it's going it's it's to be easy. It's, gonna, it's just going to roll along. And it doesn't. Um, this book here, Before You Were Born, took 10 years from when I first wrote it to when I was holding the book in my hand. Uh, generally, it's not that long. This one only took about three years. But you, ch you have to have a lot of patience. And when you send your book out to a publisher, you just need to be okay. With, with the waiting, and I think that's been, that's been one of the hardest things for me. So what do I, you know, in order to kind of cope with that, I usually just throw myself into my next manuscript so I'm not thinking about the fact that I'm waiting, um, and that actually helps. I had a, I've written a lot, of, a lot of books in that way, just to cope with the waiting. <laughs> but then, of course, I'm waiting for the next book to go through the, the same process, so. So it takes longer than most people would ever It takes a long imagine. time. Picture books take longer uh, because, you know, you have obviously um, the illustrator needs time. They need um, at least six months in their schedule open to work on the illustrations of a book. Um, and then, um, you know, putting it together with the creative team, that's a little bit different. A novel, definitely a little slower, but still still you have to be patient. Mm -hmm. And then did this take longer because of the format as well? Um, the graphic novel, so Fred and Marjorie, um, I had wanted that, I had written it years ago as a picture book, so I think that one took about six years for me to get a contract because it wasn't really a picture book. It, was, it took an editor to read it and say, this should be a graphic novel, can you rewrite it? And uh, when I got that bit of advice, I said, sure, I can do it, and I rewrote it in three weeks, and I felt like like someone had opened um, a window in a dark room, because it, it was just such a, a fabulous way to write this story. Um, if you look at the illustrations, they're, ch they're incredible, mm -hmm. and on every page there's multiple illustrations, so that one definitely took, I think uh, once I rewrote it as a graphic novel, that one, was coming, that one came out about two and a half years later. Um, but that was rushed because they wanted it to coincide with the 100th anniversary of the discovery of insulin, which is what this book talks about too. So, yeah. And in the end, when you're holding your book in your hand, almost like when you hold your baby after they're born, you forget all about the pain of the labor. When you hold your book in your hands, at the end of the process, you kind of forget the agony of, of the wait and the, <laughs> you know, the slow pace of, it's, of the business. It's such a wonderful feeling. It is. It really is. So you do write for children, mm -hmm. um, so you write picture books, you write um, chapter books, um, this graphic novel, and you've written for um, young adults as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know that you uh, would go and visit with classes and visit with children and, yeah. and talk to them. So looking back at your own childhood, mm -hmm. is there advice that you would give to yourself, your younger self, looking back? Um, yes. Definitely. Um, whether my younger self would have listened, I don't know. <laughs> um, but, you know, it took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do. And I think um, oftentimes, um, I, I see it in my own kids, kids feel pressured to figure out their life's path at a very young age. Um, and I think maybe even more so now than um, years ago when I was growing up. And I, I know I certainly, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, and I, I felt um, um, I felt a lot of pressure and, and stress not knowing. So if I could go back to my, my younger self, I guess the advice I would have is, um, A, don't worry, it, it'll, you'll figure it out. Give yourself time. Give yourself time to um, find out what you love, what you love to do the most, what you're good at, what your skills are. Um, and just you know, take a deep breath and and believe in in yourself and the fact that it will all come together. Just give it time. Don't pressure yourself. So I think that would be the advice I would have given myself back in the day. Well, thank you. I think that would be great advice for for um, 
any young person, uh, but particularly for young people who have an interest in writing and have that, um, you know, those creative dreams and yes. not, not necessarily knowing what to do with that, you that, know, that, that creativity. Can I add just one more thing? I have a lot of kids who say to me, oh, I want to I wanna be a writer. Amazing. I want to publish now. I say, no, don't do that. Just write for the love of it. If you love writing, if you love books, keep reading, keep writing. But publication is such a, it, it can be a very frustrating journey. And I wouldn't want to see any young person um, lose, um, lose their their way because of the, you know, the long wait times or the rejection, that's okay for when you're older. When you're young, just, you know, cultivate your, your, your passion for, for words and let that be enough. And when you're older, you know, after maybe, after high school at least, wait until then. That's great advice. That's great advice. Thank you so much. Thank um, you for coming and, and being part of, um, the Living Library here at Fawn Public Libraries, and I wanted to thank you for sharing your voice with us um, and sharing your voice in, in your stories. Uh, and just talking to you now makes me want to rush out and go and read some more books, <laughs> which, which should be should be a, the, the yes. impact that, that talking to a writer has. And that's what yes. I want to do. I want to go read some of your books and wonderful. read some of the all the wonderful books we have in our collection. Thank you so much. Well, thank you.